So this is a story about the last Christmas um, I spent with my mom. Uh, Julie and I, my wife, uh, flew out from New York City uh, to Michigan where my family is and where my mother was by then living in, a, um, in a, an assisted care home and they were taking great care of her but she was in the, the final stages of Alzheimer's. Um, she was barely talking um, and when we went over there uh, on Christmas morning bright and early to see her, um, I, I couldn't help but notice that she really couldn't do anything. Um, on her own. I mean, the attendants, they, they, they dressed her, they got her in and out of bed, they fed her, and I thought, gosh, here's this incredibly intelligent, independent woman, and she can't do anything for herself anymore. Um, so we spent time with her that morning. Uh, she said nothing. Uh, she smiled a couple times, but I wasn't even sure she knew we were there. And then we opened up presents, and she didn't really pay much attention to them, except for one present that came from her um, granddaughters, and it was a pop-up book the, uh, for the uh, 12 Days of Christmas. And so we all decided to sing the 12 Days of Christmas to her. And so we started off, and lo and behold, she began to join in. Um, and we all stopped and let her sing. Now, it wasn't perfect. The words got jumbled up. The days got a little jumbled up. You know, French hens turned into French houses and so forth. And so at one point, I stepped in and tried to correct her um, one of the lyrics. And she looked at me. And all of a sudden, her eyes just blazed. And she said, are you going to let me do this by myself? And I thought, aha. She's still in there, isn't she? And she can till, still do some things by herself. And that was the last time I saw her on Christmas. Uh, but it made me feel like um, she did know uh, it was Christmas and we were there. So my husband and I had just moved to Chicago a few months before Christmas and I had just started this job that because it was so close to the holidays, they said I wasn't gonna be able to go home to see them on Christmas. So. Um, it would have been the first time I would ever be celebrating Christmas without them, and it was a little hard um, time of the year. So um, I started thinking about what it would be like to be home for Christmas. You start to think about when you're a little girl and like all these things that you really enjoy. And I thought how wonderful it would be if it snowed in Chicago because that was always something very dear to my heart. Um, when I'd wake up and there'd be a white Christmas. Um, but as Christmas got closer, the forecast was just calling for um, drizzly rain. So I was, I was like, oh, it's okay. So when I woke up that morning on Christmas, I looked out the window and a foot of snow had fallen on the ground. And it reminded me how God never fails to turn things into good. And in a way, I had like a piece of home with me that day. So it was December 2005, I was a teenager and um, we finally decided as a family that we were going to get a pet. And so we were looking at Yorkies. Uh, my dad wanted another type of dog, but we were three daughters and his wife, so he was overruled. Um, we found out that the Yorkie we've been looking at um, was taken home to a loving family. So we had planned on leaving the facility, um, but my mom out of the corner of her eye saw a little white ball of fluff in the corner and she was like, we should look at this dog. Um, and the animal care attendants had nicknamed him affectionately Mop because he was this crazy little white ball of fluff. And my dad was like, no, we shouldn't take him out. We wanted a Yorkie. Um, you wanted a Yorkie. Um, so we ended up taking, taking him out of his little cage and he was kind of nervous and slip sliding around on the tile and just kind of falling all over the place like he was on a little ice skates. Um, but we fell in love very quickly. So we took him home. We named him Bo. He is 12 years old and a welcome addition to our family. He truly was a Christmas miracle. This is a story my mom tells pretty much every Christmas without fail. It was the 1980s. I was one and a half years old. Um, I had been born with a dislocated hip, so for a while I had to wear this big bulky cast um, for about a year or so. And it was October. I The cast had come off, but I still wasn't walking. Um, so December that year rolled around. It was a few days before Christmas, and my mom and dad were sitting by the Christmas tree. My sister's 
were already asleep and I was in my mom's lap and my dad said oh you know what do you want this year for Christmas what do you want from Santa he was just trying to be funny and my mom said what I really want is for Diana to walk this year and just like that I got up from her lap and I walked from her to my dad in front of the Christmas tree um, and they started laughing and crying and so that's a story she tells every year um, as a miracle that happened to me one of my first Christmases. This is about a song. Two years ago I was in the hospital with a terrible lung infection. I didn't know if I'd be able to breathe without an oxygen tank next to me, let alone sing. I feared I'd never be able to sing again. Well, thanks to prayers and the good, good medicine and the good work of the doctors, I got out of the hospital. But singing, that still seemed like a question. And then a friend of mine, Lisa, said, Hey, Rick, there's a song I want you to learn, and we'll sing it together. Emmanuel was the song. So I learned the song, but I wasn't sure I could sing it until we got together. Our God is with us. And if God is with us, who could stand against us? The two of us got together, and the first time I sang, my voice was back. What a gift that was.